Rebecca Azor is in the house You know she got a funny story to tell Talking politics, culture, a real life-ish uh, I live in life in the ATL Benjamin, yeah, that's my man He's always coming up with the master plan Politics scheming, I'm trying to find the meaning of life And while the feds keeps us in strife I'm your DJ I really don't need no introduction right now But you know what? I stay dropping them jams Y'all know who I am Good hope, dad jokes, culture is politics. What you're hearing right now was the culmination of all of this. I started out with the mic in my hand, and I graduated to a plethora of fans. I love bringing joy to the people. It makes me feel great, makes me feel regal. I do what I do for you. 8 p.m. Friday, you know how we do. Let's go. It's time for like it or not. We're back to the Like it or not, y'all. 2023. Let's start this damn show. Let's go. Like it or not, starts now. How you doing? <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. <sighs> How you doing today, Ben? How you doing I'm, this morning? I'm doing good. Let me put these on so I can hear a little bit better. I, I, I want to hear you. Because you would have been able to tell me that my mic wasn't on. <laughs> well, I can't tell you that, yes, without these headphones on. But mm -hmm. now I can hear you loud and clear. How you doing this morning? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Um, Another you know, day in the neighborhood. Another day, um, but I'm grateful to Jesus for another day. <laughs> this is crazy. Let me I, let me just turn my speaker up. If there's feedback, I think they'll be all right. What are you thinking for? What are you thankful for this morning, Rebecca? I'm. Do you need me to speak a little clearer or louder? I can do that. Like no, is that no? You're fine. I just wasn't as prepared as I needed to be for that camera to hit on. But I'm ready. Oh, to okay, okay, gotcha. No problem. I'm never prepared when the camera comes on. Um, but you know, God is still good. Now, for, for like uh, this week, is that what you asked me? How my week was? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, the week was. Mm, I mm -hmm. understand. Say less. The week was. <laughs> you know, and how they said it, and what is it? And God wept, mm, Jesus mm. wept, the week was. Mm. And so, um, you know, we're getting through. I, I am grateful that I got through it. Friday came quicker than I thought it would. Good. Um, Good. And what's so crazy is I am celebrating one year of my now partner uh, asking me to date him. That doesn't mean I accept it on that day, but I'm celebrating one year. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. I know that's crazy. That is, that's crazy. You know, a year goes by so fast when you're not paying mm -hmm. attention and when you're having a good time. When you're, is it a good time? I don't know. I'm just assuming you've been there for a year. So shout out hey. to Burman. Yeah. Missing all my edges. Oh, no, um, <laughs> absolutely. It's, uh, it, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, just to, you know, have that, uh, where I think, and I will say this, y'all, you guys have seen me over the years and I've talked about who I've been dating occasionally. Hmm. Uh, what was it? The African prince from years ago, uh, who turned out to be nothing but nothing. And, um, yeah. Uh, don't forget uh, about the other one. When, 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 you and know, then the other one before that one, when, no good. When we either. live in the same city, that one. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, it, it was a crazy time. And, and, oh, ben, and yeah, you remember you remember that one? Look, I remember look that brother good. I remember that brother well. Been around the block. That look, that fat ass. That's disrespectful that you can remember that. <laughs> wait, wait, not that. That was another one. <laughs> oh yeah, so it's been a couple. Um, Those were the days <laughs> we were walk, working in that office, and mm -hmm. they were paying us so little. And, and, yeah, they're and we looked at each other and said, what are we eating for lunch? And this you like, true. let me text my, <laughs> my lunch bay. And, 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 and you know, so funny, I was talking to my now partner and I was telling him, like, you know, I know women are in a space where they're using guys. I really needed my man to get me food at that time. And I had a whole job uh, where millions of people were viewing our show, but we was hungry. <laughs> ain't that ain't that crazy? Millions we, of views. We, we didn't know the depths about monetization at that time, and they were literally monetizing off of our stuff and getting no, yeah, because they told me, and well, they told well, me. I, 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 I knew it, it's an it's an unfortunate you reality knew you of had the to game. Drag, drag us through the dungeon like that. Well, you know, it was a sacrifice. Uh, mm. uh, a couple sacrifices were made with a couple of companies. One is anyway. We we're going okay, deep yeah, we're today. Going, we're thank, going deep. Thank you, Lord, for freedom. <laughs> but I say that to say, you know, even with um how I felt like I would how I was dating back then. I know that there's only growth now. Um, in this year of my life, I'm 33 now. And you guys were with me when I turned 30. Oh, so, wow. uh, uh huh. And now I'm 33 years old. And so I'm at a place where I'm dating. I said this, what, three years ago to y'all. And was it true? May maybe it wasn't, but now I'm in a space where I feel like I am. I'm dating to marry. Um, I know that there are men out here who are my age who have been beyond and past the stage of, oh, you know, this girl wants me to be her food bay, mm. uh, you know, and then there are women who are past the stage of being like, oh, you know, he know where home is. We're at the stage of I'm looking for a partnership. I'm looking for somebody who chooses me every single day, even when it gets hard. And I'm learning that because things have gotten tough and what the world now, don't get me wrong. That's how he says wrong. wrong. Get, yeah, he African too. Um, but don't get me wrong. It's it's interesting because what I, I've learned that what you can take in a relationship, somebody else may not be able to take. So us walking around giving unsolicited advice every mm. day on posts, especially on Justin LeBoy's page. I remember when I was dating my last partner, I would go on Justin LeBoy's page, which is Kanye's representative mouthpiece. I don't, I don't know how that is, but it's like a meme page that posts a lot of toxic things, right? Yeah. Um, I can go on there right now and just read you two of them because that page goes and everybody who's in the dating scene or looking to date, they'll go here and they'll hear stuff like, if you bring a man on a girl's trip, we finna F him. <laughs> this, oh, wow. this is I, I need your roster empty as soon as we make eye contact. I don't F around. Mm. Can men physically tell if a girl recently just had sex with another man? This is what they promote on, on, on this type of page. Um, men get cheated on too and stay. They just don't tell nobody. Men, men love saying, use two hands, baby. You barely got enough for one. Be effing for Wait real. A, this, wait, is, who, this, this is Kanye's the post people site. Oh yeah, this is a man that just got big off of posting this type of content, and now he is. Uh, I don't know why, but he is Justin. Um, he's um Kanye's mouthpiece. If Kanye needs something to come out, it's gonna come from this man that we've wow. never like. But this is he posts a lot of toxic things, and at a time where toxicity was actually something that was glorified, and it's still pretty much glorified, but um super glorified. Let me tell you, because I just remember, and I'm going to make a video on this so, so y'all can kiki about it, but I just remember, I was talking to my best friend about it. There's a song by Betty Wright. If oh, y'all don't know who Betty Wright is, yeah, no pain, no, no pain. pain. Yes. Um, so she has a song where she's saying, you know, after the pain. Okay. So, and she says in there, she says, she remembers when people used to get together. She's like, y'all judging me when y'all been taking men back. And I don't like when she says, I, I, I want um, a piece of man and no man at all, whatever in the song. But she did say, back then they used to get us together, cook a little food up and bring us together. And somebody used to say, uh, don't blame Mr. Charlie. Uh, Mr. Yep. Charlie is just a man and he's doing the best he can. Come Now, first of all, when she explained Mr. Charlie in the song, the previous song, Mr. Charlie wasn't no good. Mr. Charlie didn't deserve but she knew hey this is my man this is what i can take he's working on himself and then she said god is going to bless me Same for everybody. loving you i said not god gonna bless you for loving him <laughs> she said for all the secrets and everything but my thing i say all that to say listen y'all all of this stuff love is gonna be hard hmm. no love is not the hard part the work choosing each other is going to be yeah. the hard part choosing when things each other get every tough. Morning. 
Love isn't the hard part. Love comes easy. I love you. I mean it. Now, what I choose to do when things get hard, am I going to fight or flight? Some people deserve flight. Don't get me wrong. But some people, if you love them, don't allow Justin LaVoy's post because you woke up that morning in a mood to make you leave that good man, Savannah. Some men are not good, but sometimes people will be going like, oh, he he did, he just, his, his communication is off and he's working on it. When you met this man, his communication wasn't the best, but he's working on his communication. And if he's actually working on it and you see that every day, understand that some people do not change overnight. OK, and if you choose to forgive somebody, that is a choice that you made to, to forgive this person. And if that's what you want to do, don't allow 99 people to be in your stuff. Mm. Right. Right. Well, well, good luck to you out there, sis. I, I, I would tell you, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's choosing each other every morning. And I'm just grateful to be at an age and a stage where I get to choose to make coffee for my wife every morning. I love that That's for you. It. I want coffee with her for the rest of my life. Of course, she could do better. Of course, my eyes do what they do, but you got to choose. She chooses me every morning. I choose her every morning. And even when we, we get on each other's nerves, we start all over each morning with a nice, nice fresh yeah. cup of coffee. And yeah, and you guys have been married for... Uh, who, 2009? How many years that is? Wow. Yeah. I don't even know. I know our I year, like... but I don't know what year this is. So I, I know what year we got married, but I don't know what year we're in. So... Mm -hmm. Here we are. <clears throat> okay, but you're married and I've watched it. I've even seen her, you know, not pregnant one day and pregnant the next. So that be <laughs> so y'all been doing it. Y'all been doing your thing. Stage, been no more <clears throat> no more children. <laughs> That's okay because you have your kids. You have your beautiful, wonderful kids, and you've been rocking with her. Uh, and and I love to see you guys grow. You guys are a great couple of mine that that I know in my life who I love to see. You know, at the end of the day, who has gone through things and still chose each other. And I can see oh, elevation in that. So yeah. So shout out to Jada for sure. Um, and shout out. I'll give you his name on my wedding day. Yes, whatever his. Uh, on, he's on not, he's not, is he an African prince? What is he? Uh, a he's, Haitian a, he's an African prince, but he's a he's a different type. And I will give y'all his name on my wedding day. Huh? <laughs> Amen. I yes. posted his arm. I posted his arm full of tattoos in my story. That's, oh, that's as close as you get. <laughs> that's it. And, and this, people are crazy. You're not revealing oh, until he reveals that ring. Yeah, girl, this is the same guy that was in my DMs, girl. Like, like, yeah, no. I, I, mm -mm, no. Anywho. We have so much to talk about. Discussing DMs and all this other stuff makes me think about I sound like future. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like letting go of toxic people makes me think about Candace Owen Ooh. and how she was let go. Was she toxic or was the people she working for toxic? Mm. Now, who is accepting her in the black community at this time? Are there people accepting her? There are. But this is a great conversation I definitely want to have and I want to open up the floor with. Candace Owens was let go uh, from, uh, what was it, the network she was working Day on? The Daily Wire. The Daily Wire, and we know who runs that is ben that ben Shapiro. Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, you guys know he is a white supremacist, somebody who just functions under, over, on top of, on the side of whiteness. Okay, uh, and his white supremacy always bleeds out in so many different forms. He's disrespectful. He's okay with being disrespectful. Everything and anything black and good and and sexy <laughs> and all of the above bothers him. It makes him so upset that he will do three hours and send people out into the streets to protest a, a damn movie, to protest a song, and then get out and uh, utilize um, cultural appropriation to, to, to try to disrespect us at the same time. But this, this is why I say she's, she's been working for him. Yeah. She's been working alongside him as she's, she's led a lot of different conversations that were very problematic even before then um, about her, cho her choice of words for George Floyd. I'm talking about Candace Owens, y'all. Uh, her, her words about George Floyd, Breonna Taylor saying that it was their fault, talking about how a lot of homes are fatherless or whatever these, like a lot of things in, that this woman has put out as a black woman um, being the, the, the talking head for the, the right. No. It, um, it has been problematic. Um, and she has led those conversations on her platform, even when it surrounded COVID. She has made a lot of problematic points. I say that to say Candace Owens went on The Breakfast Club about two days ago. And on The Breakfast Club, we'll talk about how The Breakfast Club carried that in those interviews um, or that particular interview, very lackluster. Um, but 
the, uh, was on the breakfast club and Ooh. was asked a series of questions. She ended up, and, and this I can say, I can fully say with this, with my face <laughs> that Candace Owens was on the right side of her talking point when it came to her saying that a lot of Republicans are okay with genocide and she's not. There's genocide happening in Gaza and she's not okay with that. Ben Shapiro took her talking point from the Breakfast Club and stated after she posted, I guess, the Bible verses about that, you know, saying that, you know, this is genocide, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said that a lot of people, because of what he said, everybody, all his supporters, even her supporters, took her commentary as anti-Semitism. So with that being said, they said that she was basically against Jews, against Israel, against what, you know, what Americans are for right now. Um, and it's hurtful. So they took her, they took her off. It, but it took that. What she said against black people wasn't the issue. Just like I, and then it mirrors Kanye. When Kanye said that slavery was a choice, mm-hmm. when Kanye made all of these different um 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 mentions. They didn't, they didn't care. They allowed him to continue to platform. Yeah. They invited him everywhere. And then when he said something about Jews, oh, baby, baby, everybody came out, okay? Because we don't, I don't like anti-Semitism. I'm not for it. But here we are. And Candace Owens, all she said was that genocide was happening within, in Gaza. The people, the Palestinian people do not deserve to die like this. They do not deserve at all. And because she said that, we saw her, she was out of there. But it also helps me understand. I want you to understand, I am okay with her saying that, calling a thing a thing. Well, when you're saying the truth, it's the truth. Um, does that require me, Libika Azor, to not remember all of those hurtful things that this woman has said and done in the name of what I believe, grifting and money? Does that, does that have me, should I... Should I feel bad because I'm not going to be one of those people that are a pillow for her? Do I believe that people deserve forgiveness? 100%. But I can choose who I want to forgive. My, I know Jesus has to be like him, and I want to be like him every day. That's going to take work. Um, Candace Owens did a lot to the black community. And as she understands and knows that she's being let go by the white community, she's going to fall towards Black people who are going to want to uplift her. In the Breakfast Club interview, they thought just listening to her and not pushing back on some of the points that she's made that's been hurtful to Black men, to the Black community, they didn't think that that would be... They just thought how they ended the interview after just saying these things, they just said, you see, we could have conversations with people with with opposing views. And that was it. That was it. So with that being said, um, I'm going to ask Jesus to heal my heart, but you can't tell me that I have to forgive this person. Mm. I, there is going to be somebody to do it. There's going to be a church mother. That's what they're for. There's going to be somebody, because I do believe that everybody deserves forgiveness. Do I, I don't have the heart right now because of a lot of the things, a lot of the rhetoric she spewed for years in right. the name of Donald Trump and right. their Republican com, uh, um, companions, hurtful things that have been said against our community and lies and uh, propaganda. And for the people who died at the hands of police officers to say that this was to help spew misinformation and to basically say that it was their fault. Yep. Ben, let's talk about it. Um, Well, I want to start with asking Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy if they did any research before this interview because how do you let this woman get on your screen woman man non gender non-conforming it doesn't matter how do you let a person get on your show who has said that white men are the most oppressed people in this country she's also said that white men are experiencing what black people went through mm. she also <clears throat> attacked george floyd uh she attacked brianna taylor she made a mockery of everything that is black. Yep. And they didn't ask. She even said that the only problem with Adolf Hitler was that he attempted to globalize, not what he was doing inside of Auschwitz and all of the other concentration camps. That wasn't problematic. It was a problem. It was a problem because he tried to nationalize. They did not ask a single question about any of those things, but instead allow her to forward her most malicious talking points. Mm -hmm. She even got on there and said the reason she couldn't marry a black man was because she thinks too deeply. 
Mm. She was like, she she had to marry someone who can keep up with her thinking. He's he's a failed businessman. Your husband is a failed businessman. Parlor. He owned Parlor. Parlor failed, and you're helping him with your finances. If your husband is anything like Steven Crowder, he might not even be your husband. I'm just wondering if DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God actually bothered to do any investigation, or did they do a favor for the owner of iHeartMedia, as well as the owner of their show, who are both right-wing affiliated people, and bring on someone to forward Donald Trump talking points without any pushback whatsoever? I, I, I'm thinking it's the common thread, right? Their Breakfast Club is owned by iHeartMedia, and iHeartMedia just got exposed for giving $250,000 to Ted Cruz from Texas. Did DJ Envy mm. or Charlemagne the God bother to research Nam Bit before they got on air and forwarded this woman who has intentionally made herself the very bane of Black people's existence? Nope, not at all. No. And, you know, it's interesting to say, I know that sometimes uh, as a journalist or a host or a personality, watching that was so cringy for <laughs> me because I know that I know Charlemagne's uh, how he can question people. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that. And we know even how DJ Envy can interrupt to get some information and, and carry it out. I've seen them when Angela Yee was there, Angela Yee, she and she would definitely put in, hey, but um, here uh, New York Times says that this and that and that, and ask and do whatever. Or here on this particular day when you said on your platform, X, Y, and Z, I didn't get any of that. What I did hear was that um, um, when he they questioned her about Macron's, um, the Canadian president. Uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron's wife. abortion policy? Yeah wife and if oh, she wife. was a trans or a man or not trans uh oh they, they joked about that they had time to joke about that it wasn't even a joke they were very serious oh and God. she went she said no at first i'm like you know why aren't there any pictures and uh his wife uh was never seen and they showed a brother then they never showed a brother pictured with the wife and then Charlemagne says wow you know what the, why didn't they show why didn't they show now it became who's on who's on uh, 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 uh in the interview now who's not there why is Macron on uh, like, come on now, let's be for real. Candid, yeah, do you actually believe mm. those things that you said when you said that George Floyd, who I on this platform have talked about in a situation and I was on the side of George Floyd and everybody else who looks like me, who felt that that was literally a murder that happened before our eyes. Tell us why you sat on your platform and that George Floyd's fault and that Breonna Taylor as well as somebody. Do you believe that diversity and inclusion is unnecessary mm. within schools, honestly? Because you're the same person. They said, this is how they brought that up. Because you're the same person that in your school, you sued them, I believe, for yep. discrimination. And when she was in high school or something. And she, she kind of tried to leave that, like, you know, just kind of brush it under the rug and answer that. But those, those, they asked her, like, oh, but you are somebody, you know, there's something that came out that you sued them. And she was like, I mean, I did, but it was somebody that I, you know, that I once dated or talked to. It was a friend of mine. He was Caucasian. And he, um, what she said, she was like, he, he turned out to be gay and he was just really upset with me and he him and his friends sent me uh, a video and they were saying some really mean things so yeah but I'm like girl no that means that you understand the why we we talk about uh, Black Lives Matter and diversity and inclusion it worked in your favor at one mm. time so why can't we understand why it needs to work through our favor historically she knows so when she was talking I can see her old self her black self peeking trying through. to creep out <laughs> and but she had to still she was doing that and i feel like um she missed not playing a character mm -hmm. so in, in these black spaces she missed not playing a character and so she came and she gave a little bit of you know some blackness this woman jess hilarious whom we think it's a beautiful woman we talked about her, her here yes. she she had nothing she had nothing to say nothing to offer until it got to you know, the way people view me online. She was like, exactly the way people view you. It's like, um, she was saying like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's people online will say, this is what she said. And it's just a clip or whatever. Ma'am, she got full episodes out attacking the black community, putting out propaganda, as Olay would say, putting out misinformation, 
And let me ask you a question when you're done. Go ahead. Uh, well, and caping for, for, for the white people every single day. And she allowed so many white people to say things to the black community or black people just out of her needing a check or whatever. You married white. Stop making it a big deal. Like, I don't understand. She said she married a, a, like she married somebody who was on her level. I took that as, OK, you know, I wanted to go ahead and chime in with Dr. Umar Jif. You know what I mean? <laughs> but. Uh, it, it, you married white, that's okay, girl. People marry white every day. People mar- and they still are good activists or whatever the case may be. They create little, you know, mixed babies that go on to be J. Cole, that go on to be, uh, like, uh, don't play. They go on to be good people, but go ahead, man. J. Cole. <laughs> Shout out to J. Cole, actually, uh, quite the lyricist. Um, Absolutely. But you're not wrong. Uh, <clears throat> has Jess Hilarious ever really done anything meaningful for the black community, though? such that we should expect her to step up in that moment? You know, I would like to see, because this is the this is the place I'm at. We don't have to forgive people, but I'm not against people. Like Ben, you said that you're where you are at now in your life. And I said, I'm not there, but I would love to be there because I think that's God. Oh, well, no, 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 I'm with you. No, mm-hmm. forgiveness is divine. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 great. So we're there, right? So for me... I would just hilarious. I think that she was funny, like for sure. But I do think like she had some problematic moments that were not only problematic, they grew to be like, even in that moment, they're talking about trans people. You have people in the room. Why didn't we have anybody else give a different point of view? You guys are sitting here and it's just not, this is, you're you're talking to a, a person that has is big in politics as far as um, political journalism or uh, political commentary. And why didn't y'all come a little bit harder? Charlemagne, you had a show that was given to you where you discussed pure politics. It was just you. And you discussed pure politics. And I've seen you do your work. I've seen how you can do this. Also with DJ Envy, same thing. Um, I wouldn't say the same thing for Jess Hilarious because she knows how to be just, you know, she's growing in this space. But if I were her, while this is the moment we have our laptops, this is, we're in 2024. Back then, we didn't, if you just didn't know, you just didn't know. You have your laptop, you have your cell phone, you have these things available in front of you. Figure out what it is that she said and done. Question her about it. It's an interview. Let's have conversations. And if there's something that you agree with, it can't be just the trans thing because we saw your stance on it, just hilarious, when it came to T.S. Madison. Come on. And how you just made it. It was like, we can understand. You don't have to accept or like. Nobody does. But you being on a platform that trans people listen to you like you making it seem like they are such a problem some of them somebody made a post about having a period they had nothing to do with you but you got on there and you made it about you and like it's stuff like that people say things online every day that i don't agree with it doesn't mean that i have to go i can mute them i can take them off my platform i can i i don't have to make a scene about somebody's sexuality or whatever. Girl, just move on. That's one. Two, her also, um, and I'm talking about Jess Hilarious. I always, y'all can go back and search this up. I'll never forget it. She went, I follow her. I've been following her for a long time. And she did a live or some kind of video on her page where she was upset that a Middle Eastern man was on the plane. Yes, I remember that mess. And that was, she doesn't understand that she feels that way because America, white America told her that during 9-11, people who are Middle Eastern are all terrorists. So her coming onto a plane and putting that out there too. And this is, it's problematic that we continue to feed into this. Again, I want all these black women, Candace included, to definitely grow. But I am mindful about, hey, I remember what you did, my good sis. And as for me in this house, that's right. I don't have to do anything for you or with you. I'm not going to bash you. I'm going to remind you about what you said. And I haven't heard Candace say anything that was apologetic. I haven't heard Candace say anything that was her taking accountability. I haven't heard it the same way from Jess Hilarious. Yeah. And with both Charlemagne and uh, DJ Envy, who are some people that I know to get on and make themselves donkey of the day, apologize, do these things. No, their energy is doubling down these days. Since they brought Jess Hilarious on, they made a skit about um, 
the T.S. Madison thing and who they're offending, how they're offending different communities. They made a skit, you guys, and a joke about them offending every community. Shout out to Angela Yee for getting away from that. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you. Like, because at this point, between the mess that DJ Envy is in and Charlemagne, I don't even... Charlemagne is caught between two masters and you can't serve mm. two masters. And this is mm. what I'm going to tell you. One thing that Candace got right. She, she, she did tweet that. <laughs> yeah. That's what she, that's what she, you yeah. cannot serve God and money, right? Whatever mm -hmm. your God is, if your God is a God of justice or your God is the God of white supremacy, like let's be clear. Candace Owens, God is not the same God. She don't, she don't even go to church enough to know about the black Jesus, right? So she serves white supremacy. She just made a very clear choice that she's not gonna serve white supremacy and Zionism, which is Ben Shapiro's very specific type of white supremacy. I know a lot of people be like, oh, it's not white. No, 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 no. Let's be sure Zionism is white supremacy of the highest order. Mm -hmm. Candace Owens said, I'm not going to go with Zionism all the way to genocide. Okay. She has that much of a soul. It doesn't really take a lot for you to oppose genocide, but congratulations, Candace. And by the way, Alex Jones, the lizard people, man, the, the conspiracy theory, yeah. Sandy Hook, he's mm -hmm. even said, okay, okay. What they're doing in, in, in God is just too far. Okay, great. Two of the most disgusting people in the history of American politics are able to see that what Benjamin Netanyahu and Zionism is doing in Gaza is genocide and they don't want to mm -hmm. be affiliated with it. Mm -hmm. Cool. You're still demons. You're still servants of white supremacy. You still are doing the bidding of Donald Trump. You're still yeah. operating in the most insidious level of black hatred possible. You yep. don't get any points from us, even if you do get to go and sit on Breakfast Club for free yep. without yep. any pushback. People, and again, somebody's going to get them. I believe that we all need saving. It's like, you know, the church is a hospital. Go there. Um, <laughs> when Kanye West um, came out after saying those slavery comments and stuff, he nobody was accepting him. But white, white people were, but then he made some other comments and made enemies over there. So he went over to the black church and what did he do? Mm -hmm. He utilized them to and stepped on their backs and then left them where they were. Um, I know another grifting activist who constantly used the church Ooh. to to do something uh, the same way. And now um, he ain't even in the church. <laughs> never. Now he ain't even in the church. Um, so but that's where y'all can go. Um do I, like I said, people deserve, they deserve forgiveness. There are murderers. And this is what the Bible says. And again, every day I'm trying to be like Christ today won't be one of those days for me when it comes to, um, Candace, Candace Owens. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with some of the points that she's made, um, on the breakfast club because they were points outside of what she usually says. Like when it came to the Gaza thing, uh, when she tweeted about how, um, the right is wrong and, um, utilize Bible verses. Oh, great. Good for you. When Liz Cheney said that um, uh, Donald Trump was a, a terrible person, that's cute. That's great. Been, been, been a, a, a terrible person all this time. But now you want to speak up? I don't like any of that type of stuff. Now I have to give you, now I have to make sure you got four more years or two more years of your seat because you spoke up. Mm -mm. No. And mm, mm. are you promised? Listen, because you want to be a prodigal da daughter, it ain't gonna be at my house. I'm not gonna run and meet you in my fields. Does she does she still believe that white men are the most oppressed people in the United States of America? She said that we do not need. She said that she said that it does. And how she framed this, it makes those um, those the shade room comments. Uh, black people, uh, it makes those type of people who won't go read an article, who won't go watch more of it, who will just sit on the clips that are are, are shared. Um, she says things enough for it to be like, why should we focus on historically black people being divided? Um, I said in my mind, girl, because we're just, we still are, mm. we are fighting things. But while I was watching it, um, and she's like, why should we focus on that? That's what they want us to focus on. And we should be moving past that. And, and, and if we have like these schools, like which I think she said something about like with the diversity and inclusion and the separation, um, 
of of what like why why the, why do they have to be special things for black people? It needs to be for every listen because no matter what you say, if we take that away, it will still be black people getting right. disrespected, right. people being put at the bottom of the total pole and not being accepted into different colleges, jobs, all of this. Uh, and that's us saying that we we don't see color. Mm. <laughs> I have two white best friends. Uh, I I invite those people to my house for dinner and they invite me to the cookout. The true problem isn't being solved. Is if we look over it, this has been the problem for a damn near God knows how long, okay, here in this country, my whole entire life. So all the progress that we make, it's like how it's like how when they gave us Roe versus Wade. And women were able to have an option and have a choice. And when they took that away from us, that was so much work that was undone. Mm -hmm. So us getting diversity and inclusion and having that took taken away, and they already started in colleges in Florida. Uh, they've been taking away diversity and, inc and inclusion um, away, those programs out of the schools, yeah. you know, out of the schools. Uh, so at PWIs, they're removing that. And you just know organizations and things. So this is what this is why I say her framing it as she was talking on 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 the Breakfast Club. Like, why should we? Why can't we just be? Why do we have to say you know the black you know the this the that? Uh, we have to do that. You know why? Because we're not recognized outside of that. So when we recognize ourselves, when we love on ourselves, that's why we talk about black love, and we because that's something that's not promoted. The black unity is something that wants to be shifted. I sound like Dr. Umar, Jesus. Mm. Um, <laughs> like no, but seriously, our representation in the world, and especially where we live right now in America, is something that is looked at as inferior. And should always be treated as inferior. Whether we step into the room for that job, having all of the qualifications, we understand that diversity and inclusion type protects us a little bit, somewhat protects us. But that's all we got. And we worked hard to even get that. And now you're talking about undoing those things, having grants, because we know our communities are the ones that are underfunded. Our parents are not the ones that are making the most. Come on. And yet we can't we can no longer have those funds that uh, help us like with the fearless fund that that helps a lot of businesses black businesses get a little startup 0.1% of all the capital in the country went mm -hmm. to a black woman firm and they mm -hmm. lost their collective white mm -hmm. supremacist crap because they said that there should not be um, a fund a capital fund that is geared towards black businesses specifically because that is racist, is racist. Yeah. What a Spanish that, thing about that, DJ Envy. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't that questioned? Why didn't you present these types of conversations to Candace Owens? It's okay. She's still going to have her point of view. She's still going to have her conversation. So that's still going to be there. That's right. But why wasn't there any pushback or any follow-up or any questioning that made sense? Because the reason why you have her on here is not for her to tell all. She wasn't giving us a tell-all book. Good, it was good. to have an interview. That's good. That's good. And there's a distinction there. Thank you for that distinction because, you know, while we're not, you're kind and Olay was kind enough to not really question their journalistic skills. I don't know if I'm that kind. I do kind of want to question them as journalists, but more so than that, we have to really look at the kind of control that is over black media. You do not have a single black media platform that is large enough that will actually challenge white supremacy, even in the form of Candace Owens. You simply don't. Every influencer, and I want to, something that um, uh, was just put on the screen a few minutes ago from B, um, there's a very specific strategy that's being employed. Candace Owens is the tip of the spear of it. She, she, she is not coming home to blackness. She's yeah. coming back because she needs a new audience and she knows exactly how to divide the black community more because there is this vein of um, language that she's using very precisely mm -hmm. to stir up yep. anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. pro-Hitler support. I wanna be clear, if you mm -hmm. look at who's supporting Candace Owens right now, now that she's divided from Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro, Shiro, she's <laughs> getting pure Nazi support. 
Yeah. Like gripers, like actual people yep. who pride themselves on being Nazis. That's who's supporting her now. And she is bringing that full force into the black community because she's going to find like no, no cap. I know plenty, not plenty. I know about a good handful of folks mm -hmm. who actually believe the kind of stuff that she is saying that she said about Hitler that she's saying about Donald Trump. And so, yes, she's absolutely being sent to the black community to pull people two different ways. One, to Donald Trump. Two, towards the very specific type of anti-Semitism that she has mastered the language of, mm -hmm. and she's going to find some support in the black community because you got mm -hmm. those same type of people everywhere. Every Everywhere. And that's what we need to understand. She's to me, whistleblowing. And it's going to be, hey, Black people, let's come on back, right? We're going to be accepted after. And th this is what I want you guys to understand, too. We can identify. DEI didn't save her ass in that room of white people. Nope. Because they were, you were their DEI pick, my, my good sis. You were their diversity and inclusion pick over there. And when, as soon as you said anything and something, they made sure they let you uh, they, they let you go in less than 24 hours. They got you spoke on a black platform. And let me tell you something. I can identify and say, that is an issue. That is a problem. But at the same time, you Reap what you, you carried yourself on over there. Yep. Now you, that's what I say, well, I want to be a prodigal daughter, slowly but surely. You want to be the prodigal daughter that, that doesn't agree with conservative views and that doesn't agree with, um, and say that you don't agree with anything liberal. Um, so for me, you're looking for a space to land your feet and to start and build anew. That's right. That's right. Without holding any, at least you could have came with some accountability. Yeah. At least you could have said, you know what? Y'all, I was a fool working with these people, making these comments, free yourself. That would have been better for me. I wouldn't have forgave you. Like I said, but there would have been people for you in that sense. Yeah. Everybody in these um, quick microwave comment sections from these quick microwave uh, clips that they're not going to go. They they don't know. Some of them don't know who Candace Owens is. They don't know her history. They don't know what she just said about a month ago. They don't know what she said three weeks ago. That's right. They don't know what she said three days ago. That's right. Excuse me. On this white platform against the black communities. Follow and see that this is somebody that you, that's like having a, not a friend. Yeah. Having a friend at some point who started just saying really nasty things about you, really terrible things about you, treating you terrible, and you finally decide to walk away from that. And all that pain that this person inflicted on you, you had to figure out how to release that trauma, relieve yourself of that trauma, get yourself away from that negativity. And then they circle back and be like, hey, friend, where have you been? Nobody knows me. Like, No, <laughs> like imagine that though. Imagine her circling back and doing that to the friend doing that to you. You're not going to want that. You now have found ways to elevate yourself in your life. You're not going to accept that person anymore. God bless you, my friend. That's all I got for you. Yeah. Yeah. You but fell. You broke a couple bones. The power of media, though, the power of media is this is the fact now. Um, she is going to be pushed down the throats of the black community and she's going to speak with a certain veneer of blackness. She's going to come off black. Um, and, and they're going to use her voice. As, and, and she's going to recruit quite a few black people, not mm -hmm. because she has anything of substance to say. But once you put the glit and the glamour and the viralness behind it, mm -hmm. people be like, oh, she doesn't sound too bad. Oh, she yeah. doesn't sound so horrible. Mm -hmm. Never mind the fact that nobody is mentioning that she supports Hitler, that she thinks Breonna Taylor deserved it, that George Floyd wasn't really killed by Derek Chauvin. He had an overdose. She has the deepest seated hate. And, and, and listen, just look at her wedding pictures. She she has a deep seated hatred for herself. You mm -hmm. don't show up at your wedding looking like that, Candace. I'm sorry. Ben, Benjamin P. Dixon. Just saying. That's what it is. I was looking at her on the breakfast. I said, How's, look, she's such a beautiful girl, um, woman. Um, probably the best mom a best wife, whatever the case what may you be. And all for giving this, but money? no, I'm not. But every time you present yourself, that that nastiness is what seeps out. Seeps out. And I can't 
take you seriously. Some people were like, oh, is it because she doesn't wear her nails a certain kind of way? She doesn't wear lashes. She doesn't plaster her face with makeup. Her face is plastered with makeup. She does wear extensions from time to time. Um, she does wear lashes. Uh, it's just presented in a, what you guys will call a clean way. And that's more white, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and that's why they're saying, oh, that's why y'all don't want to listen to her because the, the messenger ain't looking like, ain't doing whatever. No, the messenger has done some things that, are, that were hurtful to the black community. I don't care if it's Kanye. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's Kamala. I don't care if it's who you, what, I don't care. If the person has done these things, why aren't, why can't we have a conversation about it? Maybe that will lead them to Jesus. <laughs> and it, I mean, maybe that, because that's the only way. But for us to sit here and be like, oh no, Candace, they dropped you. Come on, she baby. She won't go anywhere where she won't be dismantled. Facts, Trev. Because of diversity and inclusion, the black I, community is seeing you. Two quick <laughs> things, Rebecca. Number one, she certainly doesn't. She blocked me years ago. She talks about being willing to debate anybody. Pfft, no. Not Candace. Candace will not do that. But two, I'm going to get off of her for one second. I'm going to reserve my greatest ridicule for Ben Shapiro, who has demonstrated, oh, Lord, am I going to say this on air? No, I'm not going to say it on air yet. But once a cracker, always a cracker. It doesn't matter. Oh. It doesn't matter what type of cracker you are. Ben Shapiro. Oh, Ritz. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I have another Graham. descriptor for it, but I'm going to save that for a video. Ritz, on him. Graham. Hmm. I don't give a damn. It don't matter. It don't matter what part. Listen. It don't matter your religion. It don't matter your belief. It don't mean it matter your ethnicity. Once you're steeped in the white supremacy of crackerdom, it follows you Ritz no matter and where Graham. you are. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know if they flag the, the channel for those, but Ritz crackers, Graham crackers, I don't care what kind of seasoning, salt, the everything, spice, or chocolate. Oh, I forgot we on your channel too. I thought it was just going to hit my yeah, channel. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. It, to, uh, it doesn't Rebecca matter what kind of Ritz cracker you are um but we, we listen you if you toe tapped for a certain amount of time because to me it might be a little time limit sometimes people just get let astray but baby you was invested <laughs> you was invested yes you did time. In rich crackers. You did a, yeah you did a slow like you a slow cook with this you had time to feel it and be like you know what no i'm not my black people i may not agree with everything because you don't this is this is the thing people have to understand. You don't have to agree with everything. And I can honestly tell you, there are liberals on that side that who are white, to me, who walk in whiteness. Mm? Who function in whiteness. Liberal I can, Packers. I can say that. And yeah. that's okay. Um, and I can say I don't mess with none of them conservatives and their views. That's all right, too. The, you got the talented 10th black people who feel like they got a shuck and jive and, and represent conservatives. And, and I even have family members who just believe that that conservative view is is, is helpful to them. Red it works Creole crackers. Them. I'm sorry. I had to do it. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Cubanos who view themselves as, you know, I would vote. For Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, you even got black crackers, the niggas from Trump. Come on, it's all over the place. There are there's so many. And um, so with that being said, I don't have to accept I'm trying to get I don't have to fast. open my door. I don't have to do a thing for mm -hmm. anybody but stay black and live. And um, as for Candace Owens, once again, I saw what they did to you. I know what they did to you is wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I can, can I can say that. I can I can literally, but I will not accept you after what you've done and said. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I won't I won't down you. I won't do none of that. You just will not be a part of my my circle, my repertoire. It just won't. It's not. But you me. know what I will do? I I agree with you hundred percent. Ain't got nothing for Candace, but I am definitely. I've got a few words for Ben Shapiro. Not even on behalf of Candace. But just because he's at, he's the crown jewel right now, he is Ben Shapiro is the diversity and inclusion pick for fascism. He mm -hmm. is a yarmulke wearing Nazi. Mm -hmm. He serves. He is a Jewish person who serves fascism. He is opening the door in the United States of America for actual Nazis who want to destroy anyone of Jewish descent. Now, you and me on this screen, we got deep seated issues with what Israel Benjamin Netanyahu, his right wing government, the Likud party, what they're doing in Gaza. That's a very specific and well-grounded moral opposition to mm -hmm. 
white supremacy in the form of Zionism. Ben Shapiro is using that to usher in white supremacy that is going to get Jewish people killed. So when I say he's a yarmulke wearing Nazi, that's literally his servitude, his purpose in society for white supremacy. And he's opening the door. And the funny thing about it is, Rebecca, yeah. while they're going to put the rest of us, if Nazis and these fascists get control in 2024 and they do what they want to do, they're going to come after all of us black. It doesn't matter, disabled, yeah. it doesn't matter, or, or differently able. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're trans. It doesn't matter. If you're it doesn't matter if you're Christian. You got to be a very specific type of Christian. They're coming after all of us. But when they're yeah. done coming after all of us, guess who they're going to put up on the wall next? Ben Shapiro and his yarmulke. They mm -hmm. will get him at the end. Oh, yeah. He's, oh, they're going to get him. And at this point, and like, they're coming for people one by one. Black people first. Any black person that's... We still have yet to see... I forgot his name. Who that? The man that we covered for months. Who was supposed to be running in Georgia. Oh, Herschel. Herschel Walker, we haven't he seen, heard, anything. They will use you and throw oh you God. away. Throw you away. Throw you away. You are not valuable to these people. No. And once you speak some kind of racist tone to them, you're out. When it's to black people, they need you to expound upon your findings that are so diabolical mm. to the black community, that hurts our community, uh, that leverages white supremacy, racism, prejudice, uh, marginalized communities getting shot up, um, all kinds of things. Evil. And perpetuates false narratives in America about us. They used you to catapult all of that. And as soon as you said something, just threw her away about genocide in Gaza. Like they they threw her away, like Stephen Crowder threw his family away. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, at the end of this day, what 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 Glorilla said? At the end of the day, the day got to end. <laughs> and baby, Candace, baby, <laughs> go find you a day where the sun gonna shine, and because it's not over here. And I know that may not work, that, that may not be a worry to you because you still gonna get a coin because people are gonna still wanna hold on to you and 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 watch your stuff because she has now said, you know, help with her Patreon so that she can continue the work. And people are gonna do that. They're gonna do that because they're gonna they're gonna watch that Breakfast Club interview and they're gonna say, Y'all ain't really hearing her. Y'all always, but y'all not really listening to what she's saying. Y'all didn't catch that. She really, if you really sit down and listen to her, she's saying some real ass stuff, bro. Like, y'all not really listening to her. <laughs> like, under Donald Trump, things was good for our community. Why you talking like Sexy Red? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Sexy Red, he did a lot for us. Like, I, I really like him. He ain't did nothing to me. He ain't did nothing wrong for me. Like, I really like him. You think they're going to get any of them folks he registered? Gave me a similar and, shit. You think, you, you, think, you think these rappers are going to get a single person registered and get them out to the polls, Donald Trump? But please, I, I do appreciate it. Go ahead and keep keep giving them money, right? We we like the mm -hmm. influx of cash in the black community. But do you actually think Sexy Red is going to get some people registered and out to vote? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Stranger really, things have happened. It could. It, listen, I I don't... what that, Glorilla literally, literally was on CNN. Because this is how... This is where we are. As, 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 I love Glorilla, right? Yeah, Glow, I love it. Right, Crewman on Crewman. I love it. I love it. It's hilarious. Um, but it's also adorable. It's a real accent. I like to see it. Um, and that song, you guys go run it up because it's about. It's almost like the the um, DMX song where he is it DMX where uh, no, it's like the um, uh, what's his name from Louisiana. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, juvenile, juvenile song Juvie? where he's you know hyping himself up. It's a affirmation song. Glorilla has one as well. Yeah, uh, glow. You know that's a, it's, it's a nice song. But I said to say, where we are now, even in politics, they reached out. That we're talking about the Biden administration. I'm pretty sure the Biden administration has reached out to a lot of great people. Probably like Tabitha Brown, like other like all those people, right? Who make sense. Not to say that Glorilla doesn't. But well, they don't put Glorilla on on yeah, CNN. Yeah. And Glor they was like, so Glorilla, have you? Um, so when you met up with the Biden administration and you spoke with Biden and Kamala Harris and Vice President Kamala Harris, were they looking for you to go ahead and um, sponsor them? Like, just give them the vote. You let them know that you were gonna. Is that 
I don't really know about all that. See, I I just went in and was cool, but um, yeah, you know, living my life like it's golden. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Living my life like it's golden. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you got um, that clip. <laughs> Buy my clip, please. Because I'm not making this up. She's like, but um, yeah. Other than that, but they're like, so are you gonna be somebody that backs Biden? And they were like, um, glow, glow, it's Glorilla. Find Glorilla on CNN. Um, but like if you she's like, are you gonna be the one that backs Biden? She was like, I mean, they cool people, whatever. Uh, you know, I, I just you know, at the day, at the end of the day, the the day, day gotta in. end. At the end of the day, the day got to end. That's the right answer, though. You know what? I ain't got no problem with her answer because <laughs> they asked the stupid question, N- not because Glorilla can't comment on politics, but they asked the stupid question because Glorilla don't comment on politics. Mm-hmm. She don't serve that capacity, mm-hmm. and she don't try to serve that capacity for black people. Like, Sexy Red could take a note when you're asked a silly question that's, that's trying to put you in a position that you're not trying to put your own position. She, Glorilla was not trying to put herself in that role. Mm-hmm. They asked her to come on. I think there was a part where she was in promoting her song, her new song and whatnot. And then they try to ask her about politics. She said, I don't do that. I, yeah. I love it. Here we go. Let's roll it. What was it like meeting President Biden and Vice President Harris? It was so cool. I was geek like, you know, everybody don't get to meet the president and the vice president. And so, like, just being able to be in the White House, like, I never in a, in a million years thought I'd be in the White House. Then I was in the White House and got to meet the president and vice president. Oh, they can't, they can't mess with me. Like, I just feel like, oh, you feel me? <laughs> and he also sounds like he knew your music as well. Gloria, I mean, I want to read a part, though, of a text that your mother sent you after your visit to us. It was so sweet. Let me read this to you. It says, quote, I've come from being I didn't even see all this part. This is deep. Living in a Get blue a house um, with no real furniture and Frasier to the classiest, most beautiful and most talented rapper of this generation's mom, who's moved on up to a beautifully furnished house. Get him, Glow. That is so sweet. Talk to you about what that <laughs> message meant to you. It meant everything to me because uh, we really did come from absolute nothing. Like when I was, when we were listening to this, this is actually a good clip, man. I'm interested in this. Nobody never would have thought, nobody would have been in the White House a month. So it was just a proud moment for my mama. Like she called me so happy. Like she was super excited. And that's one of the reasons that I'd be more happy about my accomplishments than anything else because how proud my mom and my daddy be of me. Sorry, y'all. I'm into this. This ain't, I ain't see this part. This was this, a good. This, this was a good part. That that's the, good, it's that's the actually, next part. But go ahead. That's, that's, that's us learning about Glorilla. Okay, let's take a listen. No, I don't. I don't know. Does he have the next one? Oh, I don't. I don't know if he does. But that, that part was smart. Good. I like not, that part. Yeah, not. And I, um, I'm looking at the lower third. You're talking about some. You know, she has a song called Yeah Glow. They put Yeah Joe on on the bottom. Yeah Joe. Um, but I, I love her accent. I, I said she's such an adorable person. I, I I like actually what she was talking about growing up in the blue house. You know, they're not having money, that whole thing. But uh, is 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 your next leader gonna be someone <laughs> who can help you with those issues? Glorilla got made it out the hood, and Glorilla's name, if you guys don't know, is Glory Hallelujah. That's her actual really? name. Oh, really? Glory Hallelujah. That's why I she thought it was. I, I I didn't know what it was. From. Gloria Hallelujah. That's yeah, her name. Thank you for mm-hmm. yes. Stop me That's there. That's her actual one hundred percent name. It's not a joke. <laughs> so praise um, the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now I say it to say she's talking about her struggle. It will the ne- your next president will they be able to speak to that those people in those communities to help them get out them get out the mud <laughs> so they can start you know saying yeah glow to themselves. Is that because I don't even know? I would tell you right now, I couldn't. I, just look at your next leader and see if that they they they're gonna um, be that person for you. While every one of these ra- other rappers like are speaking in are speaking great things about Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Donald Trump they looking for him because he he has an unpaid fee for fraud. Four hundred sixty four million dollars. Four hundred sixty four million dollars. Four hundred and sixty-four million dollars fraud, and it was just a fee. Well, actually, so actually, it's three hundred fifty million. The extra hundred sixty-four million is interest. So uh, <laughs> he's unpaid. Unpaid for fraud. Yo, next alleged for uh, for these rappers who support Trump. I think we got the other clip too. Let's see. Let's it's see. problematic. Let's listen, let's listen to this. 
how talented of an artist you are, how many accolades and nominations and everything you've got going on, at least, at least with what you have planned for the summer coming ahead with um, a concert and a tour, the idea of them inviting you there in particular. Um, did they talk to you about what they wanted politically? Did they want your endorsement? Did they want you to help people get out the vote? Hey, you know, they ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, talk politics, but I love the president. You know what I'm saying? I love everybody. And at the end of the day, the day got an end. <laughs> That's how you answer questions when you know she ain't going to thank you. Glorilla. That was the most intelligent answer that you. I ain't really got, I don't know much about politics. You know what I'm saying? But Joe Biden, you know, shout out to Joe Biden. Uh, I'm over here living my life like a go. Because what, what listen, and, and I saw people try to criticize her for this answer. Right. But I want people really contextualize this criticism. It's coming from, from black conservatives. There's a lot of black conservatives like, Ooh, look at how ignorant she is. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. I want you to really think about what did Malcolm say about entertainers? entertainers who are propped up to be the spokespeople of black people when it comes to politics. He said, the only community you see doing that is the black community. Now I argue it ain't the black community doing that. It's whiteness doing that on behalf of the black community. But here's Glorilla who said, I got something to say about my life. I got something to say about my album. Y'all want to bring me on CNN and talk about it? I'll do it. You want to ask me about politics? No. Mm -hmm. It's like you have... I always go back to our beautiful, beloved Beyonce and her wearing the Beto hat last minute yeah, to get the votes. Did he win? No. Remember when, um, you know, the alleged, oof, Diddy, right? Mm. <laughs> Remember when he went out and he said, oh, vote, vote or die. Yeah. I mean, that was a beautiful campaign. I love how it was bringing everyone together. Did we In win that, that year? We were wearing that shirt. We were wearing all of, we were, he came to our school and we were, I will never forget it. Did we win that year? 2004? No. no. And then, um, we went on to saying just in what the last year, the, the same Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Puffy Combs, Sean Combs, love went on to say, hold your vote. Yeah. And then what did we have explode after that? people um, going and writing non-committed, not committed, um, which is fine. Do your thing. I know it's a shake up, shake it up. Cause I do feel like our president needs to be held accountable. Baby, I get it. I'm, I'm right with you. We got to start shaking it up. But I was watching Shirley Chisholm um, special on Netflix yesterday. Follow me, stay with me, be right here with me. Come a little closer. And she said, yeah, come a little closer. And she said, you know, uh, absolutely. Regina King did an amazing job. Let's start there. Um, but did say that we can't, the people, um, the woman, her name was Barbara, who she was basically um, a mentor to. And that girl was like, I don't think I could really do politics. And she's like, because you can't support people, you know, who are the criminals or who are this and who are part of the problem. Shirley said, you know, we um, even said to uh, the Black Panther leader at the time um, and said to both of them, y'all, we what can we do? I understand that we don't like this and we don't like this. But if we burn down the empire, what do we have to work with? How can we make a change? What will there be for us to do anything to? It's not burning down the system, she said, because we need to do that. But she was saying, like, we need something to work with what we have as Black people to make a change. We need to. Yeah. If we're going to elect Joe Biden again, baby, that doesn't mean that we're not going to be on, on his ass. That does not mean that we can't challenge who our leaders are going to be and let them be afraid that we're going to kick them out of there. That gives us, gives us opportunity to bring in and motivate and, and, and uplift other people to start looking at those positions, just like Shirley Chisholm did. We got to do that. Y'all sitting here saying writing uncommitted and even putting that as we get closer <laughs> To election day, y'all want to be uncom. Y'all want to do that? That's actually you taking your right to vote. That how people fought for you and to give you gave you your right. And you want to do. Meanwhile, on the other side, with Donald Trump and them, whether they want him or not, they will vote for him. Nobody's gonna be writing in uncommitted, and their votes will count, and they know that. Go ahead, Ben. You on mute? 
I got to push back on you. Go oh, ahead. Lord. We came no, so far in the show. Perfect. This is perfect. Push back. Please. The non-committed votes, I believe, was in Michigan recently. Um, that's the only thing that got Joe Biden to say, OK, maybe let's not give Israel every bomb they want to kill every Gaza they want. You like, think that's why he started talking about the seat now the ceasefire, which has oh, not gone without viral, a doubt. But w without a doubt, there's a direct, there's a direct. The the weekend, the non-committed votes happened, and then the next week, Chuck Schumer came out against ben, uh, ben Shep I mean Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, the administration started calling softly, started calling for a ceasefire. They even sent uh, Kamala Harris they're using out the to word call for ceasefire. I, they, I, they use the word using. ceasefire. So I agree with your overall premise, right? I'm not disagreeing with your overall premise because I love what you, how Shirley Chisholm said it. I got to go watch it. It's a you critical. Not gonna, how are you going to get anything when you burn down the entire structure around you? Mm -hmm. You burn down the system and the people who have power in it. You burn down white supremacy. But if you burn down democracy, then you're going to be at the you're going to be at the mercy of fascists. So I agree with you. You don't burn down the entire system and expect to have something the next day. But those voters, those those people in Michigan, they did the absolute right thing, in my opinion, because otherwise we would still right now today be with a Joe Biden and an administration that is so committed to Benjamin Netanyahu that they would not even, and, and we're not even there yet, right? The, the distance between Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu's genocide is but yay big right now. But you know what? That is so significant because before it was non-existent. And so I, I, I'm with the folks who voted non primary. And it was a primary. It was a primary, yeah. right? We're talking so, about the primary. Right. But, but in the general, it, in the general, we can't, you know. Yeah. We're, we're, um, and I say this to say, I, I agree with, with what you're saying, and that's a great point you bring up because I almost forgot about it because that, that conversation about the ceasefire has not been in the media. Not at all. As, they killed it. Not at all. I literally found it by reading up on some news for the week. That's how I, I said, is he actually using the word ceasefire? He did. Kamala, Kamala did. Kamala did. Of course. Did. Of course. Of course. They sent her out and, to do the hard work all the time anyway. Of course. And and we ain't we don't see it after that. Um, because the work be so damn hard. The load when they finally send her out, it be so damn hard. She's sitting on the bed like that damn picture when she get back home. <laughs> Just sad. Ooh, um, no. Nah, Ooh. but she married white, so I think the load. Oh! <laughs> I don't know why, but that, that, I ain't laughing at you. I'm laughing at me because the same thing was that same exact thought yeah, was in my they head. Said, they said the life is easier. I don't know. They said hard wig, hard life. Um, and uh, Kamala doesn't have a hard wig, but she got that same old rap. And sometimes Candace. That Candace rap. Oh, my God, it's, Rebecca. It's, it's, it's get out of my head. <laughs> it's a little sticky. I don't know. It's a sticky situation. But, um, <laughs> but. Because on, on Twitter, the, not Twitter, on TikTok, on the clock app, there's this whole saying about, and mind you, I have no problem with people dating white. If I could, if, if there was a good man that was white that could call at me, it was good. Is a good man. That's all he got to be. I go for him. But I just prefer mine to be chocolate from the motherland or from my mother's land. Rebecca, so you're going for the, the Africanness of the dark. The you be going for that the just came here yesterday. That, yo, I love him to be dark. Wait till you see this one. A hundred percent melanin count. <laughs> Look, wait till you see this one. It can't be at night because you're probably gonna miss them. <laughs> what, what, what did Donald Trump say? Oh my god! Oh my, no, I'm not. I'm not. I see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> but anyways, <sighs> oh, we love black. We love, I, we, uh, I love, look at the black. Rebecca literally loves black. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh my God. Like, give me all of it. Like, just nice and just oh, man. no milk in my coffee. Okay. <laughs> None of that. Um, But anywho, uh, like, I, and he told me the other day, he's like, I was looking at you online and you were just so much darker. I said, baby, I'm not bleaching. It's just, I'm in the house. I'm in the house so much that I've gotten this. I've always been a dark. I've always been, look, I've always been a dark. <laughs> David, why did he have this clip ready? I've always been a black. Why does he have this clip ready so fast? David, that's this racist, is, man. Look, is this your president? Turn it up. Turn it up. <laughs> this is Rebecca. My eyes that I can't. Good. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. <laughs> but uh, 
I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones. You see, that's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long. Is that's a long is way. Is that's a long way. Oh, he's, I, uh, I am just no. I, I, David, it is so racist that you have that clip ready so fast above any other clip. But didn't have the um, yeah glow. But it was actually it was actually right on time. But it was racist how quick it got it up, David. It was fast. It was very white of you. Um, but love you, Mina. Thank you for having it available for people to know what we're talking about. I oh. literally I say all that to say the uncommitted vote does not. I like how it did. You're right, and that's a good point that you made because I almost forgot about it. If y'all don't know, our current president, who has led. Oh. <laughs> and been friends mm. and has given and supported yeah, and has bad. given weapons. <laughs> Did you see them blow up those four kids walking home? No, and I, I thank God I haven't mm. because I'm watching it happen in my own country. So like, mm. I it's just too much. Yeah. And it's all online too. You're seeing all of this stuff happen online and the support of America for months um, with what's going on, and then to say to give them pause and humanitarian pauses, uh, because they are their lives really don't matter. But for them to be able to run to another area that they don't know will if that place will be safe enough for their kids or for them to live another day. Um, but those humanitarian pauses for them to at least be able to see, feel, and whatever in that moment, but then have to be in fear again. I don't understand that. That I don't understand that. So you are right, and I will take that um where it did that uncommitted did shake up the biden administration for them to move when they had struggled with saying yeah it's fire yeah so no good point so thank you for bringing it to my attention because i almost forgot because yeah. that hasn't been covered i don't know why it hasn't been covered this man has the when he said humanitarian pause baby that was all up in the news when he said that he was going to supply food to them that was all up in the news right um but he's calling for a ceasefire. Who they whispered we know, it. Uh, yeah, it's the, yeah. We know Rashida Tlaib has been under fire for 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 literally saying that in the beginning. They called her anti-Semitic, all that, and yeah, no. Yeah, we got so it's uh, so it's so horrible right now. I, I I'm not gonna say a whole much more because I know. But my God, the, the kind of choices and the decisions that people have to are faced with everywhere, like from the Congo, through Gaza, through Yemen, through the people of Syria who've been underneath a civil war for the last, I don't know, nine years now. Like just people are having to make people of Haiti, the people of South America, uh, various nations down there that have been destabilized by the United States. And then, we look at, and then we look at America, we look at COVID-19, we look at climate change. And it's like, we literally, I can't imagine and don't want to imagine a worse timeline that we already are in. But folks every day, all day long are having to make decisions about the very safety of their children. And some of them don't even get the decision. Some of them are literally so helpless that the entire world has to watch as their children are blown up from the sky by Benjamin Netanyahu and the United States weapons. Yep. And the United States quietly uh, calling for a ceasefire. Um, and that to me, they're ashamed to call for a ceasefire, but it's, it's, it's clear that um, with the polling and so the uncommitted, and that's a good point. Thank, thank you for yeah. helping me shift that view in that way because it did. But it's such a quiet thing that I almost forgot about it. We've been calling for ceasefire so long. It's actually, y'all, it's actually a thing that they're 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 working on, and it has nothing. Like you said, yeah, we are getting substantial, a uh, zero substantial coverage on Haiti, Sudan, Congo, and the Palestine. Palestine is gone. The cover. This is how it is in the media, though, y'all. The only reason why Haiti became a part of it is because it started to get so bad that now America can now post about it and or uh, cover it in the media and use the words invade to make it make sense. Facts. Um, with the Congo and what was happening is happening there and what um, how we started understanding what the true issue is, how our cell phones are being made, yeah. how America has something to do, the blood being, all of that 
we start to hear less and less about because what we're seeing in mainstream media is Candace Owens being dropped from Shapiro's show. And they want us to really give a damn when a lot of the things I just talked about, Candace Owens has literally kissed the asses of people who spoke against the Congo, who spoke against Haiti, Palestinians. I want nothing to do with that. Not a damn thing. She stood on the side of them for so long, Mm -hmm. right? She she smells like them. There you go. You, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. the, the stench of white supremacy, it, it, it really doesn't come off. It's going to follow you for me. It, 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 it does not wash off easy, Candace. No, no. Mayonnaise. Mm. Dog yeah, hair. Ooh. Mayonnaise has been sitting out for a couple of years. Dog pee. Ooh, come on. Ew. Wet mop. White supremacy. <laughs> white. So I just saw a video of a woman. Uh, um, um, Look at me. Stay with me here. I just saw two videos. There's this woman that said that a bouncer, it's a, uh, she's a, yes, yes. Yes. She's a um, TikToker and she's big. Mind you, there's worlds of TikToks where people who are everyday people just post themselves sitting in a car and they are now stars getting their stars. They're getting paid so much money. This white <clears throat> young woman went out because, you know, on TikTok they could do white tears, baby. Um, and Risa Tisa has to set up, has set up her story. White people just got to do white tears and lie. Um, got onto that platform and she stated that she was pushed out of, she went out of the club with her friends, was pushed out of the bar, was grabbed and thrown down the stairs by the bouncer, was let out in a the bouncer was fighting her and pushed her down the stairs and, and and kicked her out of the club. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, the that club needs to be um shut down for what they did to her for da 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 and the honey the people <clears throat> let the people of that club put the video out as she was telling her story. Oh I love a good receipt they put out the video as she told her story, they put every instance. As she was walking out, they politely, calmly uh-huh. walked her and her friends out. When they got to the staircase, she tried to get at them, and they made sure she got down safely, leading her down safely each step with her and her friends. When they got to the bottom, they tur- they turned around, and she um like was cussing them out, and her friends had to say, no, 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 let's go, let's go. And they were just like, go, can you please go? She was let out so safe for being belligerent in that club, drunk and belligerent, and she was let out so safe. So her putting that out there and everybody going against that club, making them lose money, making them um people go and like, uh, uh, put bad reviews underneath because of this white woman's lie, white supremacy. Another white woman was seen to put herself, herself, she put herself underneath a truck driver, a delivery truck driver's truck. She put herself there and she said, I want my package. Wow. I know that my package is in there and I paid for it and I want it. And the man said, can you please move? We're on the road and you're putting yourself underneath my truck. I don't want you to get hurt. She calls 911, this white woman. After she put herself underneath the truck, uh, she calls 911 and she says, I want my package and he's holding my package and he won't give it to me. Ma'am, where are you? Ma'am, where are you? I'm on the road. And she starts to sound like she's panicking. And the man's like, she's underneath my truck. She just put herself underneath my truck. I just, I don't want her to get hurt. Uh Uh-huh. Because here we go caring about people who just out here being Karens, being disrespectful, putting their own lives in danger to blame a man who's doing his job. Both those stories, the people were doing their job. And because it didn't work out in the way of the white person, all they can do is say something and they'll be more believed than the other person. We have to go find footage. I thank God for it every day. Receipts. That's why when I have meetings with my um, nine to five job, any type of meeting I have, baby, I'm going to take my phone out and I'm going to record the audio because ain't nobody going to gotcha me. 
Ain't nobody going to say they never received a document. I didn't do what I was told. I remember uh, my manager who who functions in white supremacy on behalf of this financial institution. Mm. Um, I remember she said, you didn't contact me at this particular time. You know, oh, the Lord said, go back on, Rebecca, onto your, your, your laptop. And even though my computer wasn't working, I had timestamps for each moment that I contacted her. I even had a, a voicemail that was left for her. Mm. Um, and I, all of those things. And I was able to gather those receipts, tag the whole ma um, manager of the whole company and her in there. And I said, if there's any meetings that you guys would like to do, please make sure I'm in the room so that I can account for any time that this person is singing out there. People work in white supremacy. People work in that. They will literally use their power. They will use their power, y'all. And their power is just whiteness. We got to do six jobs to prove our innocence. In the system, in the healthcare, and all of it. A woman just died. Um, and I forget her name. She's a, a YouTube um content creator and a beautiful woman who was mixed misdiagnosed. Yes, fibroids. With fibroids. And the whole time cancer. it was cervical cancer. That's close to me because y'all know my journey with that whole situation with the cancerous cells and me having to do all of this and my experience, all of it. Being misdiagnosed is a big deal. Black women are having to save themselves and ask questions and do all of this. <clears throat> and the way they found out when after they misdiagnosed her was a doctor was like, oh, yep, that big mass, cervical cancer. Like, um, y'all just misdiagnosed me and I was coming here for every little thing because I knew something was wrong and y'all kept telling me nothing was wrong. Yes. In if a white person says, um, this person did this to me, Emmett Till. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. If white platforms get on Fox News or whoever and sit there and say black people are the enemy, what do we get? We get people like Kyle Rittenhouse walking free. Come on. Okay. We have to save ourselves all the time because of white supremacy, because of whiteness. Because prejudice, because they see us as inferior. So when Candace Owens stands up and says that she wants to wave her white flag, be for real. <laughs> be for real. Because you supported all of this. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you try to cry black tears, they were like, that don't matter over here. It doesn't matter over here. Don Lemon did an interview with um, Elon Musk. Oh, my. <laughs> it's been an eventful week. <laughs> it's been an eventful week. It's been an eventful week, guys. So much news has come out. And each and all the news just goes to show why diversity and inclusion is important. Do I like it? Do I like being the diversity and inclusion pick? No. Is it important to save us? Yeah. Because a lot of people are getting away with disrespecting us, killing us, all types ain't of wrong, stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with diversity and inclusion in a system. I, I, I understand your position. You've held it pretty firm <laughs> for many years. And I think it's actually poignant, but also hilarious when you say it. Because it's like, you know, Black people do... <laughs> You do it better than they do. When you clown <laughs> diversity and inclusion, you actually do it better than the conservatives do. Um, but ain't nothing wrong with diversity and inclusion in a system that has excluded us and has been nothing but undiverse. Let me just use mm -hmm. that for its entire existence and their fight against diversity and inclusion. I know you know this, but I just want to say it. Their fight against diversity and inclusion is their attempt to maintain power. And so a diversity and inclusion program at every place in this country, at every institution is actually proper. It is not a reflection on someone's skill set. It's a reflection on the fact that 50 percent of black people don't even get a call back when they see a black name on a resume. That's why yep. diversity and inclusion programs are necessary. No, they are. No, they are. And that's why when I, you know, because you do clown it pretty good, though. I do enjoy it. Yeah, because I know it's problematic because they they take it as a joke. 
I already knew that they were going to center this because what they did with Starbucks, that's when diversity and inclusion started to really take its gain its feet and momentum. Um, you know, what they did at Starbucks when that whole situation happened with the um, alleged racism encounter and mm. they had to shut Starbucks down for a day. And then we started seeing other companies do the same thing. They started to have to be aware, but I knew the same way when COVID-19 and they were going to now propel diversity and inclusion. This was the perfect place to do it in 2020 uh with uh the the literally with cops and black people the issue started growing with that and um so they needed that diversity and inclusion at twitter they started to really understand that black voices mattered so they created that black space and black twitter area for us because they knew that that, that app would go to, to 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 the pits of hell if it wasn't for black voices TikTok, white people would have nothing to do. Oh my God. If, if black people didn't diverse, create come on. on the app. Talk. Are they so, not the diversity and inclusion picks of TikTok <laughs> and Instagram? Like, if black people didn't create, I watched, I literally watched, um, what's that, that show in the pods? Love is Blind. Every white woman on there was speaking in. African American vernacular English. English. Oh my god. And they were all like, uh, yes, you better not you look, not you talking to me like that, not you giving that, not that being not da, 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 da. and I can even say it's okay for gay folks to use it because they've been on, they've been privy, they create some of this lingo for us. But I don't understand why I'm looking at white women. Being like, not not you doing that. And then, you know, it's giving. It's giving. It's, it's, the, it's the Kardashian effect. Ooh. They, ooh, it was really irritating to my to me and the 17 girls in my spirit. Um, but I say all that to say <sighs> diversity and inclusion. Um, couldn't save <laughs> Candace Owens. Any of them. And if it couldn't save any of them that are over there, not even Kanye West, Nicki Minaj, uh, they will use you and dance with you a little bit, ask you to teach them how, how to dance go and dance like that white boy, David Dance. <laughs> not our producer. Um, but then they'll get done with it and they'll want to be offbeat again and they'll want to sing with just too much vibrato again and they'll want to <laughs> make the, the food less have less sodium well, they they revert wanna, back like miley cyrus yes they want to revert back like the, which which one of the kardashian sisters got rid of the butt implant See, they, um they it was kim herself kim is getting um a reduced uh yeah. you know they're on a, everybody's on ozempic now baby bbls ain't in baby oh oh ozempic. They, they back to the they, they want to go back to the traditional 50s ozempic the, iron like, board ozempic body. is helping everybody around the nation. Have you heard of Olympic Man? No, it's no. a shot that they give you. And, and baby, in five days. Oh, is that what snatched uh, Oprah up real tight? On oh, that, and that's why saying? Oprah had to leave Weight Watchers because she said she's not on Olympic, but she didn't say she wasn't on the other ones, Wegovi. She didn't say she wasn't on Moderno, whatever the other one is called. She didn't say she wasn't on... She I'm said like, she you know wasn't on... Because I, I I took a picture of it so I can remember when I talk about it. Because they're about to do an interview. Oprah got so much money. She's on. She said on one day I no longer am with Weight Watchers, and the next day she said, "Let's have the conversation." <laughs> and I got my Oprah hair on. Let's have it. <gasps> I know a lot of people are worried about. Am I on Ozempic? But we're going to have the conversation of the ups, the downs, and we're going to have our medical team. She had a whole commercial, ABC. You get those ABC. You get those You get those Oh, baby. She's about to promote this thing. And y'all wait on it. I think the interview is coming out soon. Um, yeah. So people are getting tiny on Ozempic. But yes, they're reverting back to these looks that they Look want to have. Look at what Rosalba said. Twelve, Because uh, that's that's the real issue right there. That, that they can't get the medicine for the diabetes because of how okay, let's talk about because that. of how many people are starting yes. to use it and, yes. and, and it's in and in a way and, I, and it's not apples for apples because what they did with ivermectin was an actual solution for COVID 19 but there were actual real uses for ivermectin that people couldn't even get it for because so many people were taking it for COVID 19 and and still dying of it but anyway i thought that was a really good point from resolve mm -hmm. 
No, no. I'm glad you brought that up because Ozempic is for people who are pre-diabetic or diabetic and it allows them to maintain their weight so that their insulin and stuff, they can take it properly. All the stuff, their bodies can receive it properly because when you are overweight, it's going to be problematic for you when you are diabetic. So it's, it prevents you from being your healthiest self and for drugs to actually work. So in that case, your grandmother, your grandfather, your sister, your brother, everybody in you between, your aunts, your uncles, me, can't get it. Because everybody is used, like, utilizing it for cosmetic purposes. And that's America. People already can't afford the drug. But people who have money are able to just go and get a sim, sim, semiglutude, semi... It's called a semiglutude, something, something like that. If I'm saying it wrong, get me right. You got me on that one. I don't even know what you're saying. It's going to get me. I got to go find it. But anyways, this drug, it can go by a different name. And as soon as Ozempic came out, so many other people in Big Pharma were able to get their hands on it and start producing it. Same drug, different name, and getting it out to people. But people who actually can't afford diabetic drugs itself, but this is actually helping them. That's another, that's, that's, that's one of those other really evil things about our timeline like i honestly like y'all we live in the most twisted timeline where people have to decide between their insulin and food and rent mm -hmm. and then like people actually die, like literally die from having to make that choice and that is maybe it's not a common thing for people to die from that choice but I've, known, I've known Sorry. enough and I've covered enough stories to say that people do die from that and that people make those kind of decisions every day. Yeah. No. And see, capitalism. And they don't give a damn. Yeah, there you go. I just said it. Capitalism playing with health again. They don't care. It's as long as it's making money. We don't want to make sure people are healthy. If this drug works for people losing weight all over the world. it all the same. At a drastic pace. People are losing 90 pounds in less than a month. People are going down. So, but what is keeping them there? Are they exercising? Are they, the, but doctors are promoting it. I watched here in Atlanta. I have a problem with, um, when I first moved here, I had a problem when I first came here because I didn't look like everybody else. If y'all know me, I'm a slim girl. I'm, I'm Amazon and I don't got much wagon to drag. Um, but when I came here, that was a um, very promoted thing. And I had no problem with it. I thought a lot of people were homegrown because I'd never seen anything like it. I'm Haitian. They got ass. So me coming here and that was a whole, everybody had the ass. I'm thinking, oh, wow. And then wearing certain clothing, I not, and I have no problem with it, but that just wasn't for me. When I came from New York, everybody's wearing what the fuck they want to wear. Everybody's looking good. Everybody's just, it's just like a whole thing. But here, people were promoting BBLs. People were promoting all of this stuff. And yeah, we'll wrap, we'll wrap up. We'll be done by 10, 12, 30. But people were promoting bodies and, and all these things that were uh, like people weren't going to get. So you know what they were going? They were going to underground clinics. They were getting cement shot up into their bodies. Yep. They were getting it's so like stuff shot up into their face, all of that to meet this type of look. And it's a fad. And now BBLs are going down. Now people are starting to look at BBLs crazy and people are starting to have, when I say no waste, I ain't talking about no waste. I'm talking about no waste for the no waste. You're literally, there's nothing there. And it's, it's unhealthy how you're getting there. It's not healthy to lose a certain amount of weight in such a, a, a short time by shooting up a drug inside of you that is meant for something else. Yeah, I'm watching because I mentioned Atlanta, an Atlanta show, those are my guilty pleasures, and the women on there uh, are talking about if she couldn't lose weight, would she be on a semaglutide? Yes, she's a doctor. She said, I would definitely be on a semaglutide, and I'll offer it to my patients, and I watched her on the show offer it to different patients uh, who were considered to be overweight. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, is this considered to be overweight? Why is she considered to be overweight? Because she's going to go out for trying out for a baby. What was the reason? But what they were talking about was more on the cosmetic side. And this is my problem. And I'm like, oh, I just hate that for us where people can't get a drug because of. Right. 
it being utilized for cosmetic purposes um, and because it makes money. So it's not that they couldn't produce this drug. It's because they're giving it to so many other people and other companies have began to produce the drug. So now we can produce it. There's somebody else producing it, but you aren't going to be at the forefront because you're not going to pay for it. We need the right. person that's going to pay for it. Right. Capitalism. Top dollar. Top dollar. Over health. Yes. Yep. So. Mm, 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 mm. It's been a week. It's been a week, baby. And I bet you there's so much other stuff that I haven't covered. If I even go to Nickelodeon, we'll be here for 99 Ooh, hours. Lord. Lord. Lord, no, no, no. We ain't got no time to talk there. about that, dude. I'm not going there. Dan Schneider? What's his name? Is that his name? Dan Schneider? Yes. It's going to be a I'm lot, man. Go Look. But that is the That's whole dynamics. Day. If we can just wrap up the whole show on what it's about, the dynamics of power and how people abuse it. And how black people, no matter where you are, if it's a white a white room, baby, you're at the bottom of the totem pole and they would throw you away because of power. The abuse of power in so many different areas, the abuse of power when it comes to the justice system, when it, when it comes to the health system, when it comes to our regular nine to fives, the corporate system, when it comes, all of this, the abuse of power when it comes to you trying to pay rent at your, at the management office. The abuse of power. You better pre black <laughs> <And> woman. <laughs> I don't have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take some liberties here. I'm gonna. You hate it when I do this. Go ahead, but Rebecca. I have been working with you for some years now. I don't even gotta say nothing on the show no more. Like you, you, you're in a different stratosphere now. Keep it, keep doing what you're doing because when you summarize this thing about the dynamics of power, not only is that 100% accurate, but that's 100% what they want us to not talk about. Mm -hmm. They literally do not want us to talk about the dynamics of power, and mm -hmm. flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. God bless you now. <laughs> and you know, listen. I know from experience and you know from experience, we can talk about it from a corporate level. We can talk about it from us working in the um, uh, media and politics together, relationships. Um, what that look like, relationships. There's an abuse of power. And the person who always wants to have that power over you will belittle you, will make you feel like you got to do a certain kind of thing. For gaslight you. Gaslight you, do something strange for a piece of change. A lot of that you will see while we're out here thinking this is the only way that we can come up. That's why I believe that unpaid internships in, uh, is complete slavery and um, not doing the job that you are qualified to do in these internships, but being treated like whatever because they got to break you in because you have to cross burning sands. It's it's problematic. It's an abuse of power. All of this leading into what we know the people that Nickelodeon went through. They're giving us joy on screen, but behind the screens. Abuse of power. They're being abused. And nobody gets to tell their story. I know you got to go, David, but there's the, perhaps the greatest abuse of power on the face of this planet is sexual abuse. I probably should have gave a trigger warning before I said that, but we're talking about it anyway with Dan Schneider and all the allegations mm -hmm. going on at Nickelodeon. But with people have power, especially with men who are not uh, 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 uh uh, even 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 men who are attractive and, and 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 are conventionally attractive, like Dan Schneider is Dan Schneider, like he abuses his power for uh, allegedly, according to all allegations. But when you see people with power over somebody mm -hmm. who has anything that they want sexually, mm -hmm. from the Catholic Church to the Mormon Church to the Southern Baptist Church down to to, to uh, apparently Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. You're going to see abuses of power manifest through sexual assault. And yep. it is so commonplace. I fear there are more people on this planet who understand that very personally than don't. Mm -hmm. No. And there you go. That's the end of our show. <laughs> um, we can go into it a little bit more, but we won't. We have 1230. Listen, if you're still here, you know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to our channels. We have the Benjamin Dixon show. We have Rebecca Azor. Make sure you please, 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 please. If you're not a patron, you know what to do. Shout out patron. to DJX3C. Mm -hmm. Shout out to DJX3C. Um, Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Becca's voice on Cash App. Uh, BPD 2018 on Cash App. Listen, uh, I don't see too many of the... um. Uh, what is it called? Super chats for us to have conversations and, and, and get there with you. Uh, we have but... one. Where's the one, David? We did it last week. We're gonna do one. We're gonna do it. We got one. We have one. It's way okay. back up at the top. 
but but we have one. There it is. All right, Sophie. Thank you so much for your $5. Yeah. I really, really appreciate that. I, um, and uh, uh, thank you to everybody else who's been watching. You know your like, your share, your subscribe. It helps our channel boost our channels, boost, get us into the algorithm type fear. Maybe it doesn't, but it does something for us. But we're and, here anyway, so it does something. We need it. We need it. Um, but it what is David? Is that for you, um, Ben, in the chat? Oh, let me see. Oh, okay. So long charge meeting. Okay, so ask me anything on Friday. Public ask me. Uh, okay. Like, is, yes. Oh, okay. okay. That's the page. It's like a patron yeah. party slash ask me anything next Friday. Me and Bubba will be there. Rebecca, obviously, you know, when, as you so choose to come through and bless our presence. They, 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 they counted me out of this one. Cause I didn't know about it. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't we know just, about We it. don't bother you too much. We, we know you, you know, we get the time that we get with you. We, we, and, and, and we appreciate it. As long as y'all appreciate it, y'all know what's up. I'm not here for a long time, but I'm always here for a good time. Make sure you tip us and make sure you tip our producer. He's not always here for a long time, but he's always here for a good time where we can smoke him and we could do all like we could, we could ride him out, but he still rides with us. You know, that's what you call an ally. He don't ride the fence. He's on the right side of things. All right. That's going to be uh, DKG87 on Cash App. I love you guys. We're at the end of the show. Ben. Have a good weekend. You, you guys, time. we'll see you next Saturday. Mwah. Love you, man. Like it or not, y'all. 2023. Let's start this damn show. Let's go.